Hey guys, this is Mark Piller. In this video, I'm going to be talking about backendless timers. Uh, a timer is a background job. It's a scheduled background job. You can create and configure a backendless timer and uh, deploy it into our servers and it will be running periodically with your code in it. So you, there is an element of custom code and a scheduling mechanism. Let me show you how that works. Uh, since it is part of uh, business logic where that you can inject into your backend, we're going to switch in our backendless console to business logic. And uh, let's start with code generation. And under code blocks, you will see timers. So let's select timers and add a timer. In this pop-up, which uh, at first looks fairly simple, it, there is a lot of functionality that gives you an ability to create any kind of scheduling mechanism. First of all, let's assign a ti uh, the timer name. Uh, we're going to call it broadcast because the logic that I have in mind to put into this is going to periodically send out broadcast messages to, uh, to a messaging channel. So all the clients connected to this particular backend will be receiving messages sent out from uh, my custom code sitting inside of that timer. Uh, it will start, let's say it's going to start tomorrow. Today is uh, June 11th, so it's going to start tomorrow at a particular time, so you can adjust the time. And uh, uh, it will never expire. And uh, as far as run this particular combo box, there are several options. So we can configure it to run only once, and we're not interested in that. Uh, daily, uh, we can say it's going to run every day, uh, which is uh, repeat every day. Uh, there are other options here, uh, weekly, for example. So if we wanted to run every week on specific days, uh, you can just say one, which is weekly, and specify days of the week when your timer should run. Other option here is monthly, which is fairly sophisticated. So if you want your scheduled job to run on every January, May, and October, for instance, on specific days, then you just select what days that particular background job should run. Or you can configure it to run weekly, let's say every first and last Sunday and Wednesday of the month. So as you can see, the, it's a fairly sophisticated mechanism that gives you a lot of options to configure the schedule for your background job. However, for the sake of this example, let's go back to daily and say that it's going to run every day. Um, and uh, as far as the actual time, the time will match whatever the start time is. And it will basically be running every 24 hours, where if we put two here, it's going to be every 48 hours. Here, let's get, uh, keep it as one and click save. As soon as we click save, backendless code gener generator automatically creates the source code for our timer. And notice that this, uh, which is Java, uh, there is a comment here which points to the place and code where you can in inject your own custom code. And this particular Java class is annotated with, uh, with a Java annotation. Uh, the Java annotation includes a JSON object that precisely describes the schedule that you have configured here in, in console. However, you do not have to go with a code generation approach. It does make things significantly simpler to get started, but you can put this code together and just write it by hand following our documentation and uh, deploy your code that way as well. But using the code generator, makes it as simple as possible. The next step is to download this code. So here we have our zip file. Let's open the zip, zip file. There is a project file included. The generated project includes all the source code that was generated. And here we have our timer. And uh, we are going to extend this timer with some custom code. First of all, let's put a system out print line and say timer is running. And second, we're going to add uh, an API call to send out a broadcast message into a messaging channel. The message which we're going to send out is going to be an instance of a complex type. Let's create this complex type. We will call it weather. For the simplicity's sake, I'm going to declare public fields, but you can also declare a classical POJO with getters and setters and so on. There are two fields. One is for temperature and the other is for condition, which is going to be weather condition. 
Let's create an instance of weather and call it weather update. At this point, the object is ready and let's, let's use an API call to broadcast that particular object into a messaging channel. As you can see, we're using backendless.messaging.publish API. The first argument is the name of the messaging channel, and the second argument is the actual message which will be sent out. In order to debug this code and make sure that it's working properly, we are going to use the Code Runner utility. Code Runner can be downloaded from our website. If you go to the Downloads section, uh, you will see Code Runner SDK. I do have Code Runner installed locally. This is the structure of the Code Runner. It includes the bin folder with some utilities that you are going to use to debug and deploy your custom business logic, including timers, into Backendless. Uh, the classes and libs folder are special. They are automatically recognized by Code Runner. So we will compile our timer into the classes uh, folder of the Code Runner distribution. However, Code Runner utility can be customized with a command, command line arguments and point to a different directory wh which might contain your code. So at this point, I will configure my project to compile code into the classes folder. It is ready now, and I'm going just to compile it. And the code now is ready to be debugged. In order to debug the code, I'm going to use the terminal window. And in here, I have changed my current directory to the bin folder of the code runner distribution. And to run the code runner, there is a code runner.sh utility, which is what I'm going to use now. The very first time you run your code runner, it will ask you for application ID and server code uh, secret key. You can obtain these values from the management console. So if you switch to manage under app settings, you will see your application ID. And code runner secret key, which is located right here under manage app settings. Once Code Runner starts up, it inspects all the custom code that you have compiled into the Code Runner structure, and uh, it deploys information about the, the code into the debugging facility, which we are running at Backendless. If you go back to the Management Console and uh, select Debug and switch to Timers in this case, you will see that our timer is now deployed and available for debugging. So our timer is right here in Code Runner, and uh, you can either wait till this event hits, or for debugging purposes, there is a Run Now link that we are going to click now. And as you can see, timer is running. So remember, our timer was sending out a broadcast message. So if I switch to messaging, we have here weather update channel with the actual message now converted to JSON that you can see right here, it is being sent out to this messaging channel. If we were to create a any kind of client that uses backendless messaging API, which could be iOS, Android, JavaScript, ActionScript, or REST client, and create a subscription for this messaging channel, then any time this timer runs, we would be getting this message on the client side. I will stop Code Runner right now. And at this point, we made sure that it's working properly. In order to deploy this timer into production, there is a deploy utility, this deploy.sh. Running the deploy utility puts this code into production, and now it would be running on the back endless production servers. You can confirm this by switching to the production tab, and you can see that in production, there is our timer running in the production servers. This concludes the video. Hope you find the timer functionality useful and start using it in your applications. Thank you, and as always, happy coding.